Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Mirrorless Minutes, episode number 27. Uh, full of all the joys of technical difficulties mm -hmm. that Google gives us on a weekly basis. Mike trying to get his lower third to pop up. For some reason, I'm the only one, I guess, blessed with the lower third tonight. Yeah, so. you get it, right. <laughs> but, oh, well. At, le at least we're talking, like my voice hasn't started doing the Re whole like crazy repeating. Battle Star Galactic <laughs> Asylum thing or whatever it is. But so uh, how's it going, Mike? What's new, it's, man? It's going good. It's going good. Well, I think we're getting as much uh, out of Google Plus as we're paying for it right now. Yeah, you know, so. I probably shouldn't complain. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> it is still free. Yeah. It, it's, it's going great. Uh, you know, for, for those of you that might be baseball fans in the United States, Toronto just won the – American League, uh, you know, division series, which is a big deal because it was a crazy game, but I'll leave it at that. I won't go to a sports <laughs> show. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yep. So I was trying to think, um, my brain just, I am so overwhelmed with stuff right now. I'm trying to remember, <laughs> did we have a show in between now and the Kelby walk? We haven't, have we? No, no, okay. this is, this is actually, and it seems, that seems like it was, Four weeks, it, five weeks it, ago. It does. It seems like it was so long ago. You know, mm. so so I guess at some point while you're talking, I think I'll probably grab a photo from the walk to, to add to my list of photos to share tonight because yeah, I was thinking, man, I, actually, I, don't, yeah. I, don't I, I put two in there Yeah, uh, with mine. So, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I, I, I actually just remembered myself when I was starting. Right. Oh, geez, <laughs> yeah. I had the walk. It's been it's been like that definitely, yeah. that. you know, and it's gonna be um, it's gonna be busier and it's gonna get crazier yet still. I mean, we've got a lot of a lot of fun and exciting things coming up in the in the not too distant future here as well. So that we'll probably talk about at some point in time this evening. At least yeah. we'll we'll hint at it, and I think we'll go into a little bit more detail on the next show because yeah, that will probably. be like right right at the cusp of of uh, a big event. So yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, I guess we have a little bit to talk about as far as products. You know, we don't do that a lot. It's funny. We always talk about, you know, ah, tune into mirrorless, mm -hmm. minutes, you know, and it's mirrorless news and, and whatever. And, and lots of times, you know, we have guests on and, and we talk about just things that we've been shooting or events that are coming up. But we don't do as many product reviews, you know, as as maybe we could. So I think uh, I know I think you're kind of interested in and starting to uh, to add some of those to the show, and I know I am too. And it just so happens that this week we both have things to talk about, yeah. so it works out really well. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so, it does. It does. So if you want, I guess um, you want to start off with that, and I'll let you jump in with uh, some stuff that you've got to talk about. Yeah, sure, sure. Cool. We'll uh, let's start with. Uh, in fact, I'll hold up the package because the package is the biggest thing, and all this. Let's see the big packaging here of this. Hope I say it right. Is Hahanel or Hanel? I'm sure it looks German. Uh, the Pro Cube battery charger, and that huge package is this little item right here, and it's about as tall as maybe the 45 millimeter uh, 1.8 lens, uh, maybe two by two square. But uh, it's a it's a battery charger for for Olympus batteries. Does the BL uh, was it the BLS5 uh, or the BL5 and BLM1? Yep. Um, so it, it'll do either of those. And the, the big difference is, and I mean, everybody's got a charger. And we use, I know a lot of people, that, like I myself, use that right angle to right. make it easier to plug into a wall. And, uh, you know, sometimes when you're getting ready, I know when we were in Chicago, I think I had four or five of those chargers plugged into a strip, right? <laughs> you know. So, um, but this one, when you plug this into the wall, you can do, I don't know if you can see it there. It's yeah. got two, two outlets. I've got it for, for like the EM1, EM5 Mark II batteries right now. And it charges extremely fast. And right up front, can you see the LCD? LC, yeah. Yeah, the LCD there. Um, that LCD gives you a limit of where the battery is at when you plug it in, and it keeps continuing to count up percentage-wise. Wow. And it does it does the batteries inside. You know, I'm looking at the stats here, and it says it does it in one to uh, three hours. I'm going to tell you, it takes a, a dead battery 45 minutes, in my experience. Dude, uh, that's two incredible. dead batteries in 45 minutes. Um, it's, you know, it's just so much quicker and it's easier to pop them in. You know exactly what's going on because you see the percentage. That's the, that's a big thing too, you know, cause I hate that. Yeah. So you could use that 
as a battery tester, right? Because well, I mean, that's exactly what I do before I leave. Okay, yeah. I jump all my batteries. I run them through this thing right here. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'll have the six or seven batteries that I'll be taking on a trip. I just whip them through. I said, okay, you know, good, good, good. Oh, there's one I didn't charge. You know, because sometimes you forget when you get back and that you is know, whatever. So, so I really sharp. And on the back, because it plugs in, uh, you know, DC 12 volt plugs in, but on the back's also got a USB. So if you want to put in your iPhone or iPad, it'll charge that as well. And it does the the cool another couple of really cool things it does. It does if you've got Sony, it does Sony uh, batteries. So and that all comes in the kit. Uh, you just it's hard to explain, and I don't want to do it on here because you got to like move and click out. But this pulls out, okay. flips around, and and you can do those batteries that way. Wow. Um, it comes with, let's see here, what, do, what else? And it also does uh, four uh, AA batteries, if you have rechargeable AA. Yeah. It's, and you don't, have to re, you don't have to take off the top. All you have to do is take this little module and sit it on top. Dude. And it charges those at the same time. So, and, you know, it has a car adapter. So if you want to keep it in the car. Jeez. And have them charging out in the car, and you know it's a little expensive. I'm going to tell you, it's, it's seventy four dollars. <laughs> a little expensive when you start to think of battery yeah, chargers, but, but at the same time, uh, it's the lifeblood of your camera. And the way the you know we all know micro four thirds cameras, uh, yeah, not like uh, you know a Nikon or a Canon batteries. They're just they just go through them quick. They burn through. Right. So you have to have a lot of batteries with you and. Uh, there's a little thing called fairly cold weather coming into Michigan real soon, and that it takes a real toll on batteries. Uh, yeah. So you got to stock up even a little more. So it's a neat thing to have. I've used it for a month and a half now, and yep. uh, really happy with it. Just the speed, I think, alone is the thing that flips me out. It's in 45 minutes, I have two from batteries that are down to nothing, and 45 minutes full, yeah, fully charged batteries. So. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of pretty sharp little thing. I wasn't sure I was going to love it because I saw the price. I wasn't super happy with the price, but I had some uh, uh, gift certificate of B and H. I think when I bought it, <laughs> something like that that I used to get it. So but, uh, yeah. wait, will that charge both um, the battery? Like, so this is the. Um, I hate this. I'm I'm getting old. I know the numbers. So, <laughs> so it's like so tiny on here. Anyways, I know. Oh, so this is like the new BLS 50 for the um for the OMD EM10 Mark II, and then the BLS one mm -hmm. for like the the EM1, right? Or, or B, 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 BLN one. So yeah. will that charge either one of these batteries? It'll charge either one, and you have to just take out this top black yep. piece and it's flip like an it adapter around. plate or something. Yeah. Okay, and just put in a different plate. Man, so, you know, because so yeah, I'm depending on, on what you're taking out, you know, that's what you put in there the night before. Right, so you said it's like seventy-five bucks. Yeah, I'm on Amazon right now, and I'm looking at OEM chargers. You know, Olympus branded chargers, which right. oh yeah, generally you know you want to try to stay with you know something that's branded when it comes to charging batteries. You know, batteries don't want to start a fire. Are... Right, mm -hmm. so a branded battery charger is thirty-six bucks. Okay, so it's, it's yeah. the cost of two chargers. So sure. it's and that thing is replacing well, like multiple chargers. Mm -hmm. Plus, and it's doing it twice as fast. It feels like, and it's a battery level indicator. Which I wish I could take a picture of below my desk here. I've got eight chargers <laughs> plugged in right now. Dude. And what sucks is like you know because I want to charge more than one at a time. Right. You know, eight might be ridiculous, but whatever. So, but I still throw the batteries on. Mm -hmm. and, and if if I used the battery for five minutes and my camera took like forty pictures, yeah. when I put it on that charger, the lights coming on that says, "Hey, it's it's charging." Yeah. How long is it going to charge? I don't know what percentage am I at. Whereas that's going to tell you, hey, you know, you're at like eighty-seven percent or whatever. And then I would yeah. be like, well, screw it, I'm going to take it back out and, and run with it for that's the rest exactly of the afternoon. What I've done. Dude, that is awesome. Yeah, so, well, that's exactly how I've worked it. You know, I got eighty percent on a charge. Oh, I'm just taking that one. I'm ready. Right. To go. So, well, how did you even find that? Um, you know, I saw it on <laughs> something that was on uh, Facebook or something, but it was talking about was Sony. You know, I'm reading through yeah. about this. And then somewhere in the writing, it starts to say, oh, and it also does Olympus. After all the writing about it, wow. it goes and does, it also does Olympus. I said, oh, no, you got to be kidding me. Sure yeah. enough. And they have, I think they have one for uh, like a Nikon and Canon deal. Sure. And it's got, you know, for people over in Europe, it's got UK, uh, the Euro plug-in yeah. and everything. So you yeah. can uh, use it over there too. Really <laughs> cool. 
That's probably one of the best product things that I've seen in a long time. Cool. Yeah. Totally cool. Are you bringing that on your next trip? (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah. In fact, I tried to. If I'm going to go on a trip, I definitely know New York is going to be. And I'm going to flip it around because I'll probably be shooting the 10 mostly. Yeah. So I know I'll flip it around and use that. Wow, that is so cool. Now, um, where do you find that? I know we'll have links to it in the show notes so that everybody else can jump on that because that's like ridiculously. Cool. Yeah, and it's it, it, I put it Amazon because I think that I think it's two dollars cheaper than B and H. Okay, so so it's four or something on Amazon and maybe seventy six, I believe, at B and H. Wow, that's so, super cool. That's yeah. Awesome. All now. Right. Do you have anything else you want to talk about? Uh, uh, not, you know what? We, we've got some other stuff, but why don't you take something? Because, Mike, I can put a couple together, I think, on the okay. next one. <laughs> yeah. All right. So <laughs> this one is completely, like, way different than, than what you had. Um, <laughs> so I had this company called Going send me a product that they make. It's called the Lens Flipper. And I think the Lens Flipper started off as a Kickstarter project, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. But um, so this is what it is, Okay. What I have here is the 25 millimeter f1.8 and the 17 millimeter f1.8, both attached to this crazy like spinning mount deal. Mm-hmm. Um, what it does right now, I have the strap for it. They're trying to get uh, funding on Kickstarter for like a clip, so you could attach this to like a, a backpack or something like that. But what this does is it allows you to keep two lenses outside of your bag in an easy to reach area. And um, for me, this has kind of been kind of a big deal lately I've been traveling with like the 7 to 14 so I do the what I'm calling my personal trinity it's like the Mm -hmm. the 7 to 14 the 12 to 40 and the 40 to 150 they cover everything but there are times where I'm thinking to myself damn I wish I had a prime you know just Mm -hmm. sometimes I just like the look I'm going to get when I'm shooting at f1.8 with one of these primes but it's not always convenient to have them handy so I've been keeping them on this and then I do it like a shoulder sling like so, and then all I have to do is reach down and pop the lens off of the lens flipper, pop it on. I can throw the other lens that was on the camera on, but it's just, it's such a cool way to have quick yeah. access to. So if you're street shooting. Well, that's what I'm get, thinking right there. What you got on there is nice. <laughs> right. So, I mean, you know, your smaller lenses, you could have the body cap lens on one side, yeah. 17, 25, or for me, you know, because I'm not like proficient at street shooting, I know if I went out street shooting, 17 millimeters kind of a no brainer. Yeah. But me personally, I'm probably going to want, like, in all honesty, like the 45 or 75 with me because mm-hmm. I'm not comfortable getting up close to do a lot of the yeah. shooting that I would do. But um, I'm not going to want to dig inside of my bag, you know, mm-hmm. every five minutes to swap lenses out. Whereas this keeps it really handy and really close by and it's easy to use. Um, Price wise, again, it's not one of the cheaper things out mm-hmm. there right now. On their website, they're on sale for like seventy four ninety five. Um, yes, well, it wasn't it uh, just it says sale or something too. Yes, the micro four thirds one, right? Yeah, the micro four thirds one, and, and they make this for all mounts, but because you know who we're gonna represent right. here is micro four thirds. So the micro four thirds version of this is uh, seventy four ninety five on sale right now from normally eighty nine bucks. Mm-hmm. Oh wow, eighty nine dollars. I think would be the pushing top. it for me. The yeah. what? The top of it, if you didn't have the other lens, if you didn't have two lenses. Yep. So if you didn't have something the to lens, put there. Sure. So what you could do, um, they actually make just a micro four thirds body cap. Okay. But um, if it were me, just because I'm going to want to put my Olympus cap on there. <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> you know? exactly. right. But yeah, so I mean, you know, you can keep it covered. That way you're not going to worry about um, getting yeah. debris inside of there and then putting a lens on it and then dumping debris in your lens. Mm-hmm. but it's it's funny it's one of those things where i thought man this is kind of cool you know um i don't know if i'd use it much but i've actually been carrying it around quite a bit uh, yeah. again just because it gives me the chance to to have a couple of extra to keep primes with me all the time now well that's that's what i was thinking is put the primes on there because yeah. you know you're going to use your other ones that might be in the bag like you said you're carrying and then you got your primes off the side um you could even throw the macro on there Yes. So that you always got the macro with you. Um, yeah. I could see something like this last weekend going to um, that antique haven. Oh, yeah. I, had, I was using the 75, but I, I wanted that macro with me all the time in case I found something. And sure enough, that would have been great to have. I wouldn't even have carried a bag because it's, you know, you remember it's real tight in that bar. Yeah. And stores. 
Yeah. Um, you know, even on the streets, that would be awesome because you might not be able to, might not even have to carry a bag. You got your camera, throw some batteries in your pocket. Uh, you're ready to go. <laughs> and it's you know, funny. What, what bag you need. So I've been talking about, you know, that um, I like it a lot because I can put the smaller lenses on the primes. And right. I'll just tell you right now, um, the way that it's built, it's there's metal construction here. It's not uh, it's not poorly made. And mm -hmm. I trusted enough to where this past weekend I was uh, shooting the Grand River here uh, near where I live. And I was actually out in the middle of the river shooting. And I was wearing my um, – actually, that think tank photo. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Doing everything backwards. Yeah. The, uh, the perception backpack. And – I'm standing in the middle of the river and I didn't want to be shuffling in and out of the backpack, which would mean I'd have to take it off and hold it in front of me or something while I'm standing uh, knee deep in this river with my camera and tripod. So what I ended up doing uh, 12 to 40 and seven to 14, that's a lot of weight yeah. that I, I kept suspended on this thing right here. And I just kept it cinched up so it wasn't hanging too low on my body, but it supported the weight of those just fine because I was switching back and forth between the um, seven to 14 and 12 to 40 in the middle of a river using this so <laughs> no, it's kind of cool you know it's yeah. uh, i figured it'd be a, a an urban or yeah you know street you shooting really thing can but, use that. right um, and anybody that's going uh next week to uh photo plus expo in new york i saw i was looking at the app because i know i'm going to be there next friday um that uh they're there that yeah. company's there i definitely stop by and see them and look at the, i'm sure they'll have a lot of their products out there Yes, and if you're there, we know you're stopping at the Olympus booth. To um, see, I think I'm going to spend most of my time in. there. Yeah. yeah, I think I'll spend <laughs> a lot of time there. <laughs> I have that feeling. <laughs> yeah, so if anybody's watching and you do plan on uh, visiting Photo Plus Expo, keep your eyes open for Mike. Yeah, He's yeah, I'll be yet. there Friday, just, just Friday, because I'm in New York City for a workshop for the weekend. But definitely Friday is my uh, day I wanted to spend there. So, see, uh, everything. but you're going to be in New York for a workshop. Yeah. You want to talk about that? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be uh, – actually, I'm doing a workshop for myself. Uh, <laughs> every – you know, we're always talking about, hey, we've got this workshop to offer and that workshop. I, I wanted to go and not have to plan anything, not do anything, <laughs> uh, and just shoot and, and do it in a city that I haven't been in yet to do street photography, which is New York City. Um, it's it's going to be amazing. I mean, I don't care if it's raining, pouring, snowing. It doesn't matter. It's New York. Um, it's going to be a blast. It's with, uh, it's Valerie Jardin, uh, is doing the thing, but she's co-hosted with James Mayer and James was, uh, took over for Valerie on, in the Arcanum when, uh, Valerie left the Arcanum. So there's probably about, I think they might have nine people going and I think I know eight of them. <laughs> so, um, it's, it's going to be pretty nice. we got a place down in East village, uh, one of those Airbnbs. It's, Probably not as high rise as the Chicago one you and I shared, <laughs> um, but that would be cool if it was. Yeah, those are a little out of our price range in New York. <laughs> yeah, but, um, but uh, it's it's going to be sharp, and it's just you know it's good. Like how we're always talking about people is do something for yourself, do something mm -hmm. that you can unplug, and just shoot. And uh, I can't wait to do that because you know it's been a hectic time, and then starting next week i'm gonna be gone for i don't know what it is 21 of the next 27 days in and out of work and back and forth and so yeah it's gonna be tough <laughs> so i'm happy to start this way you know yeah and get, it, get it yeah get a chance to go to photo plus expo sort of off the cuff i didn't think about going there but that'll be fun be fun to, oh yeah to go there too and see totally. that. without a doubt mm -hmm. so do you want to um do a little bit of a uh, photo share? Yeah, yeah. Well, you wanted to go first. Oh, man. Put me on the spot. All right. Oh, well, that's right. You needed to get some photos, <laughs> didn't you? Oh, I got them, but I'll you go. You got them? Yeah. You sure? All right. Sure. All right. All right. So I'm starting off uh, chronological order here. <laughs> <laughs> starting with the Calby Walk. Oh, okay. And, uh, <laughs> so this is the wife of a friend of both Mike and myself, uh, Seth. And Seth's actually been on the show before. Uh, mm -hmm. This is wife Annie. This is in the University of Michigan Law Library, the place that I just can't stay away from if I'm in Ann Arbor. It's just a beautiful place. And uh, you can tell by the expression on her face that it is a pretty overwhelming place to walk into, especially when it's full of students who are studying and you're coming in with your camera gear, trying to be as quiet as possible. Um, 
and I, I don't shoot people a lot like in a street setting or you know things like that if i'm shooting people it's usually you know portrait type work or staged or set up you know so it was kind of fun to just sit back and observe you know watch expressions on people's face and just the look on her face um when she walked in there and just was kind of in awe of just how beautiful the building is i had to shoot that and that was with the um the em 10 mark two and the voigtlander 25 millimeter f 1.8 or oh. f.95 and it's wide open so it's a little soft but I just like the the feel of it. Well, just uh, a comment on that on that play on that uh, library. If you've seen any Harry Potter movie, yes, that's, that's what it looks like. <laughs> it's a it's a great analogy, without a doubt. It is like incredible architecture. It's stunning. Mm -hmm. uh, so the next shot is you know it's one of those things that I'm always doing when I'm out walking. I'm 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 not just looking ahead, you know, at people and faces and walls and things like that. I'm looking down as I walk, and it was. It was kind of a crappy day, wasn't it, Mike? It, you know, it, uh, like, I would say it's crappy. Yeah. Everybody walking into the law library <laughs> was squeaking from their shoes. Yes, wet. it was wet <laughs> and rainy. But, you know, days like that offer a lot mm -hmm. of contrast, you know. And when you see these little bright bits of color standing out against, you know, like the concrete, uh, it just catches my eye. So I had to stop and shoot this little, I don't know what it is, a little weed, a little plant that's <laughs> growing in this little round thing embedded into the cement on the sidewalk and the streets of Ann Arbor. It was just something that caught my eye. I'm always looking for nature, I guess, everywhere That's I cool. go. And this was uh, 12 to 40, uh, the 12 to 40 Pro on the EM5 Mark II, I believe. And I know one of our regular watchers, uh, Bob Panic, and I had a lot of discussions about doing this kinds of shooting. Uh, this is football game, high school football game. They do a charity football game um, to honor and remember people with breast cancer. So it was a special night for my family because my wife is a breast cancer survivor and we had a nephew who was playing in that game. But it was also an opportunity for me to get out the camera and give my hand, a, uh, give myself a shot at sports photography. And this is the EM1 and 40 to 150 F 2.8 with uh, no teleconverter on. So this is just at 150 millimeters at ISO 10,000. So mm -hmm. I'm pushing the camera, you know, to the limits there. And the results I think are pretty great. You know, I did a little bit of noise reduction in post, but I didn't really have to do a whole lot with it. I was pretty floored with the results mm -hmm. of that. Um, as far as focusing and stuff like that, I did a lot of anticipation where the player was going to be. I didn't try focus tracking and stuff like that. I'm not good enough with sports to understand how to utilize uh, focus tracking, continuous autofocus. So for me, it was uh, back button focus, which I, I had set up on the camera to oh. do this. Uh, I've dude, always got to do that, dude. Yeah, I've always got to take pictures of my kids, <laughs> especially when my son is dressed up like this. Uh, this was his first formal dance, or you know, it's a homecoming dance here in uh, Eaton Rapids. And uh, man, I don't know. It was just a beautiful evening out. You know, the sun was great. The trees are full of color, and it was giving me a chance also to, to do one of these shots. I've been wanting to try it. It was basically the way it works is um, I exposed for the trees in the background and then filled him in with flash. Uh, you know, for anybody who's newer to photography, um, if you've tried to shoot into the sun like this, usually you have a silhouette of your, your kid or the background is completely blown out. You know, you don't have a balanced uh, combination there. But so the way to do it, quick tip for everybody is um, I set auto exposure lock on the trees in the background. So my camera is exposed for the trees in the background. And then I filled my son in with uh, flash. And this is the EM5 Mark II and the 75 millimeter F1.8 wide open. I wanted to get uh, that shallow depth of field. So that's why I was shooting wide open. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. I've got a lot of pictures, obviously, tonight. Yeah. <laughs> so um, this is me working my way out into the river. Uh, this was actually a scouting trip before I went out and was standing in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. um, the 7 to 14 F2.8 Pro at 7 millimeters, man. I'm telling you what, it's like so ridiculously wide. I love it. It's pretty much straight out of the camera this way, too. So no crazy it's editing. Calm. Look how calm that river is. Yeah, it was nice. It, this is a shallower portion of the Grand River, right. so it's pretty – it's pretty mellow and laid back. Uh, off in the distance, there's a spot where there are a little bit of rapids, but mm -hmm. um, other than that, it's it's pretty serene location. Um, this spot right here and this photo, these were today. These next two photos were today. Oh. And um, this, 
I'm, I'm just sharing this. I mean, you know, from a technical standpoint, this photo is, you know, whatever. It's garbage. It's just, it's just a whole bunch of cranes in a pond or a swamp. But the reason I'm sharing it is because it, it emphasizes this point that I talk about so much with people and the talks that I give about getting, uh, you know, getting out and taking advantage of your commute and taking a different route home. Um, there's a, a marshland that I pass by on my way to work and on my way home every day. And there's a dirt road that runs next to it that I had not gone down yet. And today I had time to go down it. I didn't have to pick up my kids from school. So I took an extra 10 minutes like I tell people to do. And I turned down it and I'll be damned if I didn't go down the road and come up on the side of that marsh and find about 200 cranes uh, really close to the road. Um, so I got like five or six shots like this off, but when I got out of the car to, uh, get a better vantage, then I had 200 cranes in flight that I could have shot, which really wasn't too interesting. But the point of me sharing it is basically to just get off the beaten path and find a different way home, you know, just explore a little bit out of your normal routine. And this, you know, same thing, you know, this was an interesting spot to shoot some fall colors that was found the same way. I just got off the beaten path, you know. Nothing crazy exceptional about this photo, but it now gives me a spot that I know that I can go back when the colors intensify just a little bit more and then maybe do a little bit more of a serious composition and set up for a shot. Um, and again, like I said, it's just me wanting to tell people to, man, just take a left when you should have taken a right, take a right when you should have mm -hmm. taken a left. 10 minutes, 10 minutes can make a big difference, you know, and finding yeah. something interesting to shoot. Yeah, that's especially that last one. You know, with just setting it up, I think a scouting trip is in itself is great. Yeah, if you oh, know yeah. the the time's going to start changing here. We're going to be within a year, within a week of oh yeah, thing just being full of color. Yeah, um, and that's that's going to be awesome, actually. I'm sure. And then who knows those what what might be flying or in sitting in the middle of that field at the same time? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And definitely. I, and like same thing here. All right, let's see if I can uh, get this going. All right, do you see the group? Sure do. All right, well, here here is the group. I, I don't know why we're – hold on a second. Yeah, okay. Um, this is the group from Ann Arbor, the ones that braved the cold, braved the rain. Um, I think it rained every minute of the photo walk, and it stopped before and after. <laughs> but, but it was definitely worth it, and as you can tell, everyone's pretty bundled up. But I guess I wanted to talk. We've got this graffiti alley, it's called, in, in Ann Arbor, which is a great place to, to pull out the Olympus Air. So this was shot with the Olympus Air and just the 8-millimeter uh, body or 9-millimeter body cap uh, fisheye lens uh, put onto a very expensive high-tech uh, apparatus called a broom handle. And uh, <laughs> we I brought the broom handle all the way from home and hooked it up to a, a piece that I would use for handlebars for a bike. Uh, to hook that on and just real quick and you can see me holding the phone there and boom one shot we're done and everybody's moving because nobody wanted to stay for I think another shot I, I actually I think we did do one shot we made everybody say mirrorless minutes um, which was pretty good uh, but that one didn't come out as funny as this one did so that that was a great group and uh, any, if you're listening to anybody we had a great time that day um, this was shot in Ann Arbor on that day and this was the the day this is what the day looked like um the every minute and uh, just saw this guy walking across the street i'm glad i didn't scare him too much because i sort of ran across the street so i could get behind him because i didn't see anybody else in front of him and uh you know if you're any type of street shooter you love shooting things with umbrellas and uh just a you know lonely walk and you really can't even tell it's campus maybe that sign right there you can tell that it's on campus but it could be any street and, could be Paris, New York, who knows, but uh, really neat. You know, it was a day of umbrellas. Um, okay, this uh, is a um, from last weekend. We did a, or I did a workshop over in Antique Haven, same place we had gone with our uh, small town uh, to downtown workshop that Jamie and I did. But I took another group in there, and I decided to just do a, a bunch of different macro pieces. And... Uh, and oops, and this this macro piece here, this is a focus stacked macro piece, but not with the new, uh, you know, EM10 Mark II, where you actually have that ability in camera. This is, uh, you know, this is the one where you do. I did four shots, I believe, on this, 
uh, with the M5 Mark II and the 60 millimeter macro. And uh, just their big old jar of keys, grab these out, saw that Chrysler logo there. And uh, just, you know, I love that lens, what it can do and the clarity. And I think it's, if I remember right, it's either a five or an eight second shot because it's nearly dark in those places. So uh, it takes, you know, no flash. I didn't have anything else with me. So it was really cool to see that. But uh, I like the details in those keys. And this is the same place. <laughs> I know I put this out today and I've had a lot of people talk to me about it. And um, I love this shot because same thing this is with the you know i kept looking around i had the macro with me but i wanted to change it up a little bit so put the uh pro fisheye lens the one f 1.8 on and uh ran it all the way up to f 22 so i could get that saw that sunlight when i was down pretty much down on my knees some sitting on the ground and uh and i saw that you know with that bridge the sun beams coming through and you know a few leaves up there uh, nothing was set up but just this was it and in the far back you can see the the leaves and the trees starting to change back here across the field but if you saw this bridge you wouldn't believe you'd think this is out in the middle of somewhere this is just in a in a backyard it looks i think he just went and got this bridge yeah you know, i was gonna say that wasn't there when we were there last yeah, time. it's just That's a awesome. bridge i mean it's like a thing he just laid there um it's it's really not it's not going over necessarily a lake or anything <laughs> um but you, you would never know i mean you would think it's just uh you know this cool bridge going over this neat path into the fields and i mean it is but uh, with the fall leaves it really is neat and uh, i just love the uh what that that pro uh fish islands can do when you when you bring it out and the clarity and the, the trees up here just amazing and uh, one last thing, and this isn't even my picture. I'm going to share it, um, but I had to mention this, Jamie. <laughs> That's awesome. Jamie, being the good friend he is, sees sees this. I had no idea. Um, this is my photo on a billboard, um, and it's not stolen. I, I, I did sell it to Pure Michigan. They they have rights for a year on it, so it's they can do what they want. And I'm sure Coke paid a lot more than they probably pure Michigan paid me, but um, in any case, to see your work on a billboard is, is pretty outstanding and I'm real happy. And and since that time, I've seen it on two more, uh, one in the Detroit area and one out going by Lansing. So really neat. I appreciate Jamie doing that and picking up on it because um, I had no idea. They really don't tell me that they were going to do that. I All I knew was in the calendar. I didn't know they were going to put it out like that. So that's a lot of fun to That's see awesome. and if, you know if you don't know pure michigan obviously if you live in michigan you know it's a big advertising marketing campaign and it's really all over the united states i've seen it when i've been in a hotel in san francisco and texas i've seen pure michigan ads um so it's it is really a neat thing to, to work for and uh, and i know jamie's and everybody's got a lot of shots always trying to get people to put in there that's it would be great we've got some great ones for that so and uh that is yeah that's it there you go yeah that's awesome yeah it's yeah. crazy i was in <laughs> what was i doing i was in lansing i think i was with one of my kids oh did you take, go to get I was go, I was going to get, yeah i was going to get a haircut and uh or take my son and myself to get a haircut before yeah. his dance and we're stopped at a light and i said holy crap i think that's <laughs> mike's picture and i'm like shit i get out my phone and take a picture i'm like <laughs> The heck am I doing? I have the EM10 with the 14 to 150. I'm like, oh, crank in, and, and the light's green, and people are beeping. I'm like, shit, you know. And I hurry up, take. <laughs> Hold on. And then I had, I had to message you. I'm like, that's you, right? That's your picture. That's freaking cool, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I think I was as excited as you were when yeah. I saw it. I'm like, I know that guy. I know yeah. who that is. Yeah, that's I was, so cool. I, I've been showing people at work that really don't care too. So yeah, that is, <laughs> that's awesome. And then coming back, we were over in Farmington Hills. Uh, friday last friday and and again you know i saw the one on on 96 i'm like man yeah. that that one's in better shape than the one in lansing the one in lansing i think they did a crappy job hanging it but the one on yeah. 96 is nice my uh my niece took a picture of she was going back to michigan state she's a freshman there ah, and she yeah. saw it so she hurried up and took a picture of it which is cool. neat yeah, yeah pretty cool that's so, awesome yeah so like we're at the end of the show but i want to throw out the little teaser um about the next show so a lot of people that know like you know what mike and i do with olympus this program that we're in yeah. know that we do this thing every year um where olympus brings us 
to Pennsylvania to their headquarters. You know, it's this annual summit that they do. Uh, they bring everybody that's in the visionary program that's available. I mean, some of them don't come because they're overseas doing exciting things. And uh, mm -hmm. But for those of us who are available, we go there. It's like a team building experience, but we also get this totally phenomenal. And in my mind, it's like the coolest thing any company does. It's this roundtable discussion where we get to interact with engineers who come over from Japan. Um, and we get to talk about, you know, likes, dislikes, suggestions, areas for improvement, um, hardware, software, you name it, anything related to the Olympus lineup of cameras and lenses and software. And it's a good feedback session. And, um, I won't go into a lot of detail right now about it, but Mike and I are basically going to be extending the offer to take your suggestions, comments, um, ideas, uh, and we'll take them to this roundtable discussion as a way to represent uh, the end user. You know, I mean, not mm -hmm. just us. I mean, sure, Mike and I have our our own opinions on things we'd like to see added, you know, or changed on cameras or what we like about them. But you know, there are so many of you out there that. Yeah. They shoot too, you know, and sometimes it's not always easy to have direct access to such influential people like the engineers from Olympus, right. you know. So we'll at the next show, um, well, you know, the next show is going to be so close to the summit, it'll be hard to get everything totally nailed down in place. But I'm just going to let me just put it out there this way. You can email Mike or I your ideas. Mike and I will get a spreadsheet going. Mm -hmm. And basically what we'll do, we can't take every single person's suggestion, but if we see a common thread between people, like if like if we have like 200 suggestions come in, which is totally realistic to have happen after last year, the yeah. way they came in and flooded me. Um, but if, if we see like 15 people all say, you know, could you do this? then that'll probably get brought up at the table. We know that there's enough interest in that, you know, but if one person has like a really obscure thing, you know, we might not get to it, you know, just depending on what time allows us. But um, if you can uh, email myself at info at jmcdonaldphoto.com. Yeah. Um, you can email Mike at it's just Mike at Mike Baining.com. There you go. It's just, it's just simple as that. Or even even if it comes across as a message on Facebook, yep. I can, can, we'll get it in the we'll get it we'll drop it into the uh, um, the spreadsheet. Yep. So it could be you know you could instant message through mm -hmm. Facebook. You could do a post on my wall. You could do mm -hmm. something in the OMD Worldwide Users Group. Make a post and tag Mike or I in it. You know mm -hmm. it could be a a tweet where you t you know mention one of us. However you want to do it, just get it to us and like I said you know we'll um, we'll put together a spreadsheet and the more popular items you know those will get brought up um, right and again you know it's just a way that we can get your voice in front of the people that actually do the mm -hmm. big changes there so yeah and with you know a lot of the changes that are coming on the firmware update probably have either seeds or actually things that were talked about maybe in those meetings right uh, exactly I mean that's the kind of stuff you might you might be frameworking the uh, the next firmware update, you know that that comes out next year, and or maybe the next camera. Who knows? It's it's definitely worth uh, oh, sending. Yeah. Some, you've got some ideas, and uh, I mean, how many more places are really saying, "Give me ideas," you know? Uh, right. We want to know. Yeah, I don't I don't remember the last time I saw somebody post. You know, hey, mm -hmm. you know, Nikon is taking you know yeah, ideas. suggestions <laughs> from you know you the. The everyday shooter. I, I've heard that exactly zero times ever. So, right. <laughs> um, you know, for Olympus to have this opportunity available is pretty cool. So take advantage of it and, and get mm -hmm. those questions out there. Yeah, um, and, sure. and the next show, too, I think we'll, we'll give you, you know, like the hard dates of when we'll be there and, you know, what will be going on yeah. there. So, um, But yeah. in the meantime, reach out to Mike or I and give us your questions. And don't forget to tune in two weeks from now. Yeah, for sure. I've got. I'm gonna shoot out one last thing that just sure. that just brought up, and it's quick. Um, it's uh, actually we're gonna advertise somebody else's stuff that does mirrorless. Right. Um, if you, I, I'm certain that everybody watches the show and knows Derek's story. Oh, Nimble yeah. photographer, the digital story. I mean, he just he just broadcast two weeks ago his 500th podcast That's after incredible. ten years. Ten Jeez. years. That is the beginning of podcast. Yeah, yeah, he he's been. I've been following right. Derek since right. I first got my first camera. So yeah, exactly. And so he is really the. And I know he started with the EP one. I think it is mm -hmm. when he first started talking yes. about Olympus. That's right. Um, 
But uh, he's got a set of workshops next year. I think he's doing four or five. But one is uh, a street shooting one in San Francisco that I'm actually going to be on staff with him. I'm going to actually be a special guest instructor there doing some live composite. I've done this workshop with him every year. Last year I did a little bit more in street photography. But it's street photography is going to go for three days, April 15th to the 17th. So if you're in the United States, get your taxes done. Um, <laughs> come enjoy you know, come enjoy that uh, time. Maybe you take your tax refund and head out to San Francisco. Um, but we'll have a great time. He always has a, just a really cool hotel right down in Union Square. You don't need a car. You just get in, and it's this old-time hotel that's been there forever, and uh, you really get the vibe of San Francisco. Cool. Um, and, you know, he's lived. He doesn't live in San Francisco, but he's a Northern California guy, California guy his whole life, so he really super teacher and uh I just can't, you know, we'll talk more about it. Uh, may even see him on the show once or twice. So, but you know what, check it out. Uh, we'll put a link in there and he's got some other great, uh, you know, uh, workshops as well. And I certainly, uh, someone as good as Derek, I would love to suggest you attend his workshops because, uh, I love to model our stuff after his. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's real good. So, yep. That's all I've got then. All right, cool. Well, thanks, everybody, for tuning in tonight. Uh, again, two weeks from now, we'll have a little more information on what we're going to be doing with Olympus. And again, you know, just one more reminder about how you can reach out and uh, get your opinions and suggestions and ideas heard. So until the next show, uh, everybody take care, and we'll All see right. you around. See you.